everybody. Today we're going to be going through a simple return of Crosslink Online. But first, we're going to just go over the lay of the land. And then we do have Protection Plus on call with us today. And we'll be talking what they have to offer as well. So as we get started today, like I said, what we will cover is navigating Crosslink Online, going over the dashboard and what tools you guys have available to you, completing a tax return, and the flow, the nine key steps that we recommend for completing a return. And then we'll be talking with Protection Plus and seeing how we integrate within our software. So getting started with navigating it online, I'm gonna cover three main areas or three main functions that's really vital for preparers to get used to when using the program. We're gonna be covering the side navigation bar and the different ins and outs that you can function throughout online search features and different lookup options for accessing your tax returns. And then finally, the profile menu and all the different settings that you have available to you within that menu. So as I take a brief moment, we're gonna to toggle into the online application here. And now we are looking at Crosslink Online. So I'm gonna simply log in. Let me just refresh my page. I had timed out as we were waiting. So as I'm logging in, just a key note, that we do have two-step authentication, and you want to make sure you are verifying your account either through the Google Authenticator app or through email. When you first log in, you will be shown on your dashboard. And of course, if you're logging in as an account or a preparer, you may have different options on what it's called the side navigation bar. For today's call, I'm going to be focusing mainly on the office and the preparer level of the tax returns. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into my office by clicking that view button. And as I mentioned, we have that drill down option where you can access your offices with one login by logging in with the account code login. As you see, I'm at the Xlink tax office at the top here. You can always know what level of the hierarchy you are at by looking at the breadcrumbs above the Crosslink logo or your logo with your software. On the side navigation bar, right here on the left hand side, we have different functions. We have preparers and tax returns. So if I click on preparers or tax returns, I can see the preparers listed within my office and I can actually access their tax returns. Your tax returns tab is going to show you your book of business. These are all the tax returns you've started, completed, you're waiting to be acknowledged. Every single return will always be available for you to look up at the tax returns tab. And as you see, we have the blue button where you can create a new return. And I'll be getting to that shortly. Just going down the rest of the side nav, you have different functions such as printing checks, a refund calculator where you can start an estimate, and then you have, may have our quick up quick lookup reports or our custom reports. So just know the side nav bar is where you can get to these different functions throughout the application. Moving along the top toolbar here, you're gonna see a search feature. Once you click on it, you can choose between searching between tax returns or preparers. And if you're logged in as a preparer, you would be able to search for your tax returns. So we limit the view there. But it's a really nice and handy tool that we, it's a new enhancement to online where you can start typing in a last name and it's going to bring you to that tax return. If I go ahead and I switch it to preparers, I can start typing in a preparer's name and it's going to bring me to that preparer's level and their tax returns. As you see those breadcrumbs at the top switched and it brought me in a deeper level for the preparer of Priscilla. So now I'm at Priscilla's view when she logs in. Again, I was just utilizing that search feature to access that. Anytime you want to go back to the office view, you can just click on the breadcrumb at the top and you can click on the office portion. And it brings me back to my office dashboard page. Our help menu on the right hand side has Different available options to you, such as quick links like to irs.gov. We have a knowledge base built into our application here that will show you quick how-to articles when you're setting up your application. And then the big item here is when you click on your name, this opens up the profile menu. The profile menu has different login preferences and login settings 
available to each and individual login. We do have the mobile app ID. If you're using tax pass, you can always find that there. Switching tax years. We are now in tax year 2021, getting ready for season. So if you need to switch into a prior year return, you will simply click on switch tax year and then choose the year you need to go into. Your user ID in the EFIN is always showed for you here in the EFIN, um, especially anytime you need to call into support and they ask for your account information, it's always available to you within your profile menu. We have quick options here like toggle trading mode, your database setup, and login preferences, where you can choose if you want to use on-screen signature versus signature pad, interview mode versus forms-based. So those are just your preference for that, your login on how you would like to navigate the application. So that's pretty quick. Um, two things you don't see here are capture ERO signature or your preparer signature, depending if you're an office admin or logging in as a preparer, those options will show for you there and make sure you're capturing your signatures while you're getting ready for season. So as a quick overview of the landing page here, but we went over the side navigation bar. We went over our search feature, one of the few that I'll show today on how you can access your tax returns or your preparers and in our profile menu. The main page here of your dashboard will always show you either your most recently viewed preparers. So as you see here, four preparers and how many of those returns we've started, or I can simply go into a preparer level and see tax returns. So as we start talking about the tax returns, I'm going to click on the tax returns tab on the left hand side. I want to start going over a return. When you're on your tax returns tab, you can simply see your loaded returns that you've started. And anytime you click on the down arrow, it's going to show you the quick refund amount or quick status amount from the bank, your IRS status. So you don't always have to open up the tax return to get this information here. You know, your taxpayers will call you up frequently asking you, what's my refund amount? What's the status of my return? You can simply click on these down arrows and it's going to show you the status of that return. To start a brand new return, we're going to click on new return. I'm going to enter a social. And as you see, we do have that W7 button. If you do need to do an ITIN return, you can just click on W7. It would generate that type of return for you. The program is always going to open up into your client data screen unless you chose to use interview mode. I haven't chose forms based. I will touch on interview mode a little bit later. But just know when you're opening up a return, we always want to let it load. So this way the pages are loaded accurately because we are pulling data securely off of the servers to make sure we are always protecting your data and your taxpayer's information. So always let that load. And then as you see, we do have our attached forms panel on the left-hand side. The top left is going to show us our federal amounts, our federal AGI. And if you do add a state, you'll find that information there as well. The general section is going to show you the different options, the different forms that we have available to help you keep track of your tax return, such as the information and status page, we have a document archive where it's a filing cabinet for each of your taxpayers. So you can definitely store those documents remotely and always have them stored within the online application. We have the federal section. That's going to always show you the federal forms that are added to your tax return. As you see, we default to showing the 1040 and the 8879. It's optional to show schedules one through three throughout your setup. So that could be a personal preference. But those are the two forms that automatically start with the tax return. And then I'll get to how you add additional forms. On the top toolbar, we have our function tabs. So we have notes, signatures. We'll get to that later where you can sign your taxpayer remotely or if your taxpayer is in the office. You have interview mode, verify return, printing, and transmitting. So these are, again, the final steps of the tax return that we'll walk through. Anytime you may need to find additional resources, you have the down arrow right here where you can locate sending or your received text message. So we do offer the capability of text messaging your clients from the software, and you can actually get their responses in the software as well. 
tax pass messaging if your tax return was started via tax pass from your taxpayer then you guys have full integration of messaging from the software and then your taxpayer can message you in the mobile app we have reject return for review and then you can delete copy to training and save and close so just know different items can be hidden behind that blue down arrow so let's get started with the data entry of the return go ahead and as you see the red key the red fields are mainly our required fields and then we're going to fill all of that in as i go ahead and enter in some basic information we are using tab and enter to go through our key forms here we do have dynamic databases as you see i'm typing in sales sales position here and it's automatically trying to autofill it for me and i can click enter and move on our database will populate different fields on different information in different fields so as i'm entering in my data here just quickly as we're moving along just note that we are saving bank routing numbers in EIN numbers for you as you enter them. I am now at the option for opting in my taxpayer to receive text messages from me from the software. To do so, capture their cell phone information, capture that they would like to option opt in for text messaging by just marking an X, and then you want to click agree. And now you need to enter in their carrier. How do I get to those databases I was just talking about? Um, you can start typing in a field, or as you see down below, you can click Alt-C, and it's gonna populate the database window for you. And then you can go ahead and choose the correct carrier for your taxpayer. And now it populated that domain for you. And then we can go ahead and move on to our filing status. So our filing status here, for some new people who are just using Crosslink for the first time this year, you may not know how we know our filing statuses. So if you don't know, I will say open up the blue eye to the right hand side of your screen. So when you click on that eye, it's going to say the field description for you. And you can keep that open. And as you quickly see, as I switch around in my client data screen here, the field description is changing. So you can always note what that field is looking for. And if I go back to the filing status, now I know what number represents the status. So for today, I'll go ahead and put a four for head of household. And once I did that, it dropped me right to my address information because I don't need to enter a spouse in there. So I'll go ahead and put in some address info. And then moving on again, capture as much data as you would like on your client information page here. And you can see your bank account information, this information can flow onto forms like the bank application or state forms. We have client referral. If you wanna keep track of some marketing strategies within your office, you can have some preloaded um, referral types loaded onto the software through your setup. And as you see here, I can click Alt-C on my choices on my database again and i have these options that i have put in there social media radio ads referral flyers so i can go ahead and put in referral hit select and then my description you say who who made um timmy come into the office today and i can say jessica did so now when i run a report maybe mid-season end of season i can see you know which of my clients offered up the most referrals which marketing strategy best benefited my business this season. At the very end, you have your dependents. So go ahead and I'll put in a dependent here. And now as we get to the end of entering this dependent information, we are at the months and EIC codes for populating that information so as you see mo stands for months months live with dependent lived at the taxpayer we can click 12 or we can enter 12 in here because you want to put in a correct number of months but now when i click enter it's populated those codes for me and if you're still getting used to these different codes again you can click alt c at the bottom to see the different choices and again the eic codes here which letter represents the code here 
and then C stands for eligible. So those are how you can get used to the program, but just know the program is also gonna populate those codes. And as you see, it also will start populating some forms under the federal section that goes along with the EIC. But you want to automatically add the form 2441. For any daycare expenses, all you have to do is mark an X. You could click enter, and now you see that that 2441 has also added on the federal section over here. Towards the bottom, I'm going to go ahead and close our blue eye. I'll reference it a little bit later. But we do have some questions at the bottom here that we are going to finish up at the end of our tax return. But just to recap, your client data screen is where you enter in the bulk of your taxpayer's information. And then you want to go ahead and start adding your primary and your secondary forms. Now, how do you do that is by clicking the add a form button at the bottom left. When I click on that button, I am now opened up on our federal tab, which is where I can scroll and I can select any other form that I would like to add to my tax return. We do automatically have the W-2 listed at the top, it's the most frequent added form next. If you're still learning and you don't maybe remember all the form names and numbers, you can simply click on the index tab. The index tab will allow you to do a keyword search. So you can start typing in like for tuition, for example, and now it's brought up the related forms to any type of tuition credits that you may need to fill out. So it's a nice way to not have to remember the numbers or the names, but you could kind of put a keyword search in there and get to those forms. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back to my federal tab. I wanna double click on the W-2. And as you see, it looks just like the federal form. I wanna click Alt-C. I had some EIN numbers automatically saved for me as I entered in some from prior years. Hit select. I populated that information for us. And now we'll go ahead and we're gonna put in some wages here. And as you see, I do have double entry validation on. That's just making me enter in that wage number twice to make sure I'm entering in the correct data here. And then I'll put in my tax withheld. This is optional. I have it turned on for my office. It's a preference, so don't worry about it. If you don't like it, you don't have to have it on. And then you will go ahead and fill out everything else that might be on your taxpayer's W-2. Our form looks just like the paper form. Um, I know some questions I've gotten lately, you know, do we have all the codes um, for like the W-2 box 12 codes? We do have those. So you don't have to worry about memorizing them. We have them listed here for you. Anytime you see when you click on a field, the Alt-C pop up, that means we have that database for you. If you're not used to Alt-C or keyboard shortcuts, go ahead and click the three little dots and you can go to choices. So anytime you do see the three dots, those are hidden actions behind that field and you do have those options available to you. When you're finalized with that W-2, now we're at the point where we can add any prime um, secondary forms. Um, if you need to add, again, like the tuition credit or any other forms that your taxpayer comes in, at this point, that's when you add those forms and you would fill those out. If you are also doing a state return, you can click on the state tab here. Package means which federal state are you looking for? All of them are listed for you. You would simply go ahead and click on the state that you're looking for. And then now we have those state related forms for you. As a note, I'm not gonna add the state. States are not released yet. We are in a new tax year. We do release states um, as they start getting released to us. And you would also see those populate for you within the tax return for yourself. So just to recap how you add states or any other forms, we're gonna click on add a form, state tab, package, you're gonna choose your federal state there. Okay, so just to recap our steps, we went over the client data screen, we went over how to add your forms, primary, secondary, and state forms. And then our next step is going over your 8879. We wanna now determine how is your taxpayer receiving their refund amount. As you know, we do have those options for you listed at the very top here. And you have that red box marked. So this is where you are gonna indicate a one, two, three, four, or five. Five is a bank application. If you register with a bank to offer any refund transfers, you're gonna be entering a five in this field. And then the program will automatically add a bank application. 
Now, I just want to make a disclaimer, bank applications are not available yet, but they will at the start of season. So I just want to show how you will go about doing that is by entering a five here. You want to make sure your EFIN is populated on this page because that means we've pushed the EFIN information down to you. And then once you go ahead and click enter, the bank application will automatically load under the federal section for you. Okay, so just to recap the number five are for your bank applications. If you're having a, re a taxpayer receive their amount directly from the IRS, you're either putting a one or a two. Check from IRS is one, two is direct deposit. So I'm gonna stick with the one for today. And then down below is all preloaded information that could come through the setup of your preparer and your office information. When you finalize your 8079, then I'll go ahead and let's say we would now go over your child's care credit forms, your EIC forms for prepare due diligence. And I will just show here this 2441, which is a child and daycare expense form. You will go ahead and fill out that form if needed. And for today, you know, just for time, because we don't have a whole lot of time, I'm gonna go ahead and delete this form so we can show what the final tax return will look like and you don't have to sit there, but just know, um, Verify will always bring you through everything. So when I now deleted that form, and I could have explained that action, I went through the three dots, remove form. That is how you would delete a form here within the online application. So now that we added our forms, we went over 8079. I wanna go ahead and click on verify. It's one of our options on our toolbar here where it's gonna bring you through the errors or warnings that you have to clear up on your tax return. So when you see the first one, you can select it, click view and fix, or you can click enter on your keyboard. Um, this is just bringing me to make sure I get my tax return signed. So I'm gonna just mark an X for that one. And then um, here we are at, does the taxpayer consent to receive their documents remotely? So if you do want to send a remote signature link off to your taxpayers via text message or email, we do have that capability if you opted in for our remote signature service program. And then you would simply mark, how do you know? Open up that I icon and it's telling me, do you intend on sending the taxpayer remote request? You put yes. Why? For yes and for no. And then we go through view and fix. So what we have with our verification here is point and shoot error correction. It's going to bring me exactly to the line item that I need to correct or fill in that, that data entry. So it's asked me if I had any virtual currency transactions. I want to mark a no. And then I'll simply hit enter again. And now it's going to bring me to my next form. So I'm going to remove that X for the child 44, the 2441 form because I did delete the form and as you see, the program says I still have it marked. So we are intuitive. We're making those fast calculations behind the scenes for you guys. And now we're at our recovery rebate credit. If I received all three stimulus checks, then you mark an X. If you still need to fill that worksheet out, then I'll just simply click on the line item here. And as you see, we have worksheets populated. That field did populate you can go ahead and click on worksheets and now you would fill in the worksheet for your taxpayer. Once you are done, you can click back to parent form and now you're back on your 1040. And as I like to know, on your 1040, um, you could also work down to 1040 and go through and complete your tax return this way. You don't have to go through the as for method. Some people are seasoned and they just like working through the 1040 and you can do that by again, on that I icon, we have form links. Form links brings you to the forms that are hidden behind that line item. So when I click on line one, here are my W-2s. If I go on line 2B, now I have the different schedules or forms that are related to the calculation of that line item. So you can simply click on each line item and fill out the subsequent forms that are required for your taxpayer. So going back up to our verify here, we do have the aid schedule 8812. So this form was expanded with the new tax law updates this season. So this is simply making sure that you are asking and checking with your taxpayer if they did receive or they will receive the letter 6419 from the IRS stating that they received payments of the advanced child tax credit. If they did get that letter, then you would simply mark that value right here in 14F. If they did not, 
then you will be double clicking the box that I'm circling right now and you're a mark that X. So that is a new update um, for this form. And as I just scroll through, you can see that this form has been expanded quite a bit this season. Okay, so going back to our verify. Now, if you take a look, 8867, that is all my prepare due diligence checklist. So I'll go ahead and click view and fix. And now I'm looking for my EIN prepare pin number. I'll click view and fix again. And now it's bringing me through my checklist here. I can simply mark an X or you can double click with your mouse and it's gonna allow you to select those fields. So we are bringing you to the questions that should be answered. You wanna make sure you're reading these questions, especially your preparers. You know, they're gathering the documents and everything to verify um, they've checked with their taxpayer on all requirements. So just make sure you go through and you are marking these options here. And what I'll do is finish going through these and then I'm gonna go ahead and show how we can go through the print, our final stages, which is printing, signing, and transmitting your tax return off. So I'm gonna actually close out of this tax return here, and I'm going to go through a prior year return because printing and transmitting will not necessarily be available right now. We do lock those features, so this way you guys aren't getting ahead of the game. So just give me a moment, I'm gonna hit save and close here. And as you watch, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to switch my tax year by clicking on my profile menu, switch tax year, go in 2020. And I kind of did a refresh there. So I'm going to go back into my office. Tax returns tab. I'm going to look up a return here. Okay, so let's see if this one verifies. So we do have some outstanding things there. Let me go ahead and switch into another one that might be clean. Okay, so I wanna go ahead and go through with this return here. So just go through your final stages of your tax return here. We will go through what's called, you would verify your return to make sure you get a verified successful message. And then you would be opt into printing and signing your tax return. But before we get into that step, I did want to show our interview mode. So our interview mode is a guided method of doing the tax return, whether we are having our icon mode, which are the visual icons that you see here that provide a little description of the forms, or you can switch it to a script mode, where that's just going to take away the icons and everything would be text related. But for the tax return, you would simply select the tiles that pertain to your taxpayer. And this is a great way to have conversation with them. But we are now guiding you, giving you a little bit more description based off of our filing status here. And we also have the help me decide where you can link it to open up a link to the Pub 17 for those descriptions there. And as you click next, our client data screen is broken into a few different screens here address information, additional information here, but now we will be at our income here. And then if you take a look here on our left-hand side here, we do have an additional um, category that populated on attached forms list, and that's the interview mode category. We have these different categories of income, adjustments and deductions, healthcare, miscellaneous credits. You are not locked one way or another. You can simply start forms-based, go into interview mode, start in interview mode, go to forms based. So you don't have to worry about being locked screen by screen. You can simply go and find your flow that best meets your practice. But just know you're simply selecting the tiles and it's gonna populate the forms for you. The program will also not populate any forms that are not required. You don't have to answer questions that are not required. Simply go ahead and just mark the ones that apply to your taxpayer and then you can finalize the tax return at the very end by going through adding your states. It will bring you through the verification process after your results page. It will show you a nice results page. And then when you click next, it's going to now bring you through the filing options that are similar to that 8879. So just to show, we have this few information here that I'll go ahead and fix. 
And the verify, um, the, ver the interview mode is really nice to make sure that you are, you know, learning the program. It's a great way just to get the flow of the tax return going. Um, and we can go through learning that interview mode and switching the form space. I have a lot of people that use it and they like it. And then at the very end, they're like, oh, about form space. So you're really just gonna find that flow that best meets your needs. So once you get this message here, verify successful, now you're ready to finalize that tax return. So when you get that, you can now click on your print menu. You can print any current form here. You can print your acknowledgement letters. Your print menu is gonna hold everything for you but you can go to final tax return. It's gonna always bring you through verify to make sure you didn't miss any errors, and then you'll click on print. You have two options here. Print means you're gonna print a hard copy at your printer, or you can email an encrypted copy to your taxpayer. And how do you do so? You do have to make sure you do have an email on file on your client data screen in order to do so. So make sure you have one of those two ways filled out. So these are the two ways that you can physically or electronically hand a tax return off to your taxpayer. I'm gonna hit close, and then we're gonna click on signatures. How do you gather signatures? So we do have two methods. You can click on the signature button right here on the toolbar, or we do have it located for you right here on the left-hand side under general. When you click on that, it's gonna show you what signatures are missing. So it looks like my preparer signature is missing, and so is my taxpayer signature is missing. All you're gonna do is you'll click sign. Now I'm gonna sign the preparer signature first. Click sign again. And then you're now selecting your method. Capture signature means that they're physically next to you and they're electronically signing via a signature pad, on-screen signature, or your computer mouse. So I'll click next. And then for my taxpayer, now you choose for your taxpayer, what method are they signing? They can sign whether they're physically next to you, on-screen signature or computer mouse, whichever you prefer. Or if you opted into our remote signature service program, you can then send a text message link or an email link to your taxpayers and they can sign the tax return remotely. We do send a secure link where they're verified with their first and last name and the birthday and the last four of their social, and then they can review their documents and sign their tax return. I want to go ahead and do capture signature. Hit send, so now I'm doing my taxpayer. So I'll just do TP for taxpayer. I am using my computer mouse there. Hit accept. Now I'm at my prepare signature. So I'm just going to do prep for today. Hit accept, and now it's gonna load the PDF for you. As I know, I can't make this too big here, I'm sorry about that, but I'll just quickly reference that we do populate your signatures. One signature goes on all required documents here. So as you see here, we're gonna go ahead and you'll see your 1040, and these signatures will be populated for you. So it just always loads and shows you a preview of that. I can click close. And then we could talk about the document archive real quick. The document archive now stored a copy of the e-signature of my final tax return. So I did mention that document archive is always gonna keep a copy of the final tax return and your bank documents automatically for you. And if you ever need to upload documents from your taxpayers, you can always click on add new documents, browse your computer here, and then you can upload any of their documents, PDFs, Excel, Word document, JPEG, and store it within your document archive here to have an online filing cabinet and no longer need to store things within your office. So we'll go ahead and click cancel out of that. So now we just went over how to print your tax return, how to sign your tax return, and the final step would be how to transmit your tax return. And as you see, we do have the transmission button right here located at the top. And I will note, if you are transitioning from our desktop product, this is the one major difference where we do not queue tax returns, we just transmit a tax return one by one within the return. So I'm gonna click on transmit return. It's gonna then go through that verification process. You're gonna click next. And now you will see transmit federal. And if you did a state, you will see transmit state as well listed below. You would select the box, 
you would hit transmit and then it will do um, save and close the tax return for you. So that is how you would finalize a tax return. Um, and I'll just make one mention here. If you do are setting your preparers with the access level of submit for review, those preparers, that access level will still click on the transmit button at the toolbar. But when they get to this window here, this transmit button will then say submit for review. They would click that button. And now as the admin of that office, you would be notified and you can transmit and review that tax return. So we just went over a how to complete a tax return within our online application here. I'm gonna close out our return. Just gonna switch back into our PowerPoint here real quick. And just to recap, those nine key steps were completing your client data screen, adding your primary and secondary forms, any state forms as well, filling out your 8879, where you determine how your taxpayer is gonna receive their refund amount, verify the tax return, make sure you clear all errors that you need to do, collect your preparer fees, um, and that's just making sure that if it's a non-bank product return, you're making sure you're collecting your prep fees for any returns going directly to the IRS, Require you collect any required signatures, print and save the tax return, then you will queue and tra you will transmit the tax return there. So as you see, we went over these nine steps here. Um, don't get confused. Number eight, we do not do on Crosslink Online. That is a mistake, I'll own up to that one. But just know you would just still transmit the tax return there. So now you may be asking, well, how do I integrate that within my online application? So the way we do that is, you do need to be logged in at your account level of Crosslink Online. So majority of you out there, that is logging in with your account code. And so that way you're in at your account level and then you wanna access your account settings. Account settings would be located on the bottom left of your screen. And then you wanna click on ancillary products and you'll see protection plus there. As a side note, you do need to opt in to protection plus that is on the agreement side of the Crosslink tax portal. So step one is really opting in for that agreement. Step two would be accessing Crosslink online and then going to your account settings ancillary products, and then you'll see Protection Plus listed in that screenshot there. And then when you click on Manage, that Manage button, now you will be able to apply that markup fee. Um, you'll see a box there that says Add on Fee slash Markup Amount. And as Kenny mentioned, you could go up to $55. So you put on that markup fee. And then below that section is where now you will be able to either select if you would like for that to be auto-selected on either all tax returns, meaning bank products and non-bank products, you would just go ahead and mark those two boxes and it would be auto selected on the tax return for you. Or you can simply then say which offices you would like to offer Protection Plus. You can simply click all accounts and offices and then Protection Plus would be available on all tax returns for all your offices. If there is one or the other office, you can simply click which office you would like to offer Protection Plus in. So as a recap, you need to log in as your account code, account settings, ancillary products, click on manage under Protection Plus, and then that is where you can opt in for these different features there. And as no, some of you may go in and try to do that today, it is not available today, but it will be available by the start of season for you to go in and opt in for Protection Plus and any markup fees and enabling it for each of your offices. So today we covered quite a bit. We covered how to navigate Crosslink Online with the different dashboard pages. We covered how to do a tax return with the eight key steps. And then we did speak about Protection Plus and how to set that up and what it has to offer within Crosslink Online here.